Hi, I'm Robert Kajiwara, also known in Okinawa as Fija Takamasa. Today I'm coming to you from in front of the Chinese lion dog statues at the East West Center, located across the street from the University of Hawaii at Manoa. Today's presentation is for the Master of Asian International Affairs program, Asian Studies 651 East Asia Now. The title of my presentation today is Occupied Okinawa. I am native Luchuan, also known as Okinawan or Uchinanchu, and throughout this presentation I will be drawing on a lot of my personal experiences living, working, and studying in Luchu or Okinawa. I do speak the native Luchuan language of Uchinaguchi or Okinawan, as well as Chinese Mandarin. All translations in this video are my own unless otherwise noted. Although Ryukyu is the more commonly used pronunciation today, this is actually not a native term. The native pronunciation is Luchu, and I will be using the native pronunciation throughout this video, although for non-native speakers, I will also include English and or Japanese translations. Before we continue, I should mention that this video contains images of graphic violence and warfare. Viewer discretion is advised. Luchuans are the indigenous peoples of the Luchu Islands as recognized by various United Nations organizations such as UNESCO, CERD, the Human Rights Committee, and many other organizations and scholars around the world. Archaeologists believe Luchuans have inhabited the Luchu Islands for at least 32,000 years. Over that time, we have developed our own unique history, culture, languages, values, spirituality, and identity. Luchu historically had close, friendly, mutually beneficial relations with China, Korea, and Southeast Asia. Luchu became a center of international trade, finance, diplomacy, and cross-cultural exchange. It should be noted that Luchu has never declared war on another nation. Even though Luchu was, and still is, a small nation, it was highly respected by China, Korea, Southeast Asia, and even by Europeans who visited. Due to the high quality of life Luchuans experienced, in the year 1816, the British explorer Basil Hall visited Luchu, including both the cities and countrysides, and wrote that he and his team, quote, saw nothing like poverty or distress of any kind, Every person we met seemed contented and happy, end quote. Hall notes that Luchuans had little interest in money and were instead more interested in European buttons, which they saw as novelty items. This further indicates Luchu's prosperity of the day. Even U.S. Commodore Matthew C. Perry, who generally had a derogatory view of Asians and Pacific Islanders, praised Luchu for its cleanliness and landscaping, stating, that he had never seen a city or town with such a great degree of cleanliness. He claimed that not even a particle of dirt or dust could be seen. In 1854, under the leadership of Matthew Perry, the United States signed a treaty with Luchu in which the U.S. officially recognized Luchu as a sovereign and independent country. Shortly after, the Netherlands and France would sign similar treaties. Then, in 1879, Japan used its new Western-style military to invade and illegally annex Luchu against the will of Luchuans. Some Luchuan leaders fled in exile to China, where they asked the Chinese government for help in restoring Luchu's independence. China attempted to negotiate a deal with Japan on Luchu's behalf, in which Luchu's independence would be restored. However, China itself at the time was also in a very weak position. They had very little negotiating leverage, so the negotiations failed. Not long later, China and much of the rest of Asia and the Pacific would also be invaded by Japan. During World War II, Japan intentionally placed an inordinate amount of military presence onto Uchina or Okinawa Island with the deliberate intent of sacrificing Uchinanshu or Okinawans in order to protect Japan. This resulted in the Battle of Okinawa in 1945 in which more than one-fourth of the Uchinanshu population was killed during a time span of just three months. 
Japanese soldiers intentionally murdered thousands of Uchinanshu, including women, children, and the elderly, and also forced thousands of others to commit suicide. After the war, most of Japan's other colonies received back their independence except for Luchu because the United States military decided to keep Luchu for itself to use for military bases. The U.S. military forcefully relocated thousands of Uchinanshu from their ancestral homes in order to build military bases. Luchuans strongly opposed living under direct U.S. military rule and had no form of democracy or self-government. So in 1972, the U.S. gave Luchu to Japan without a vote from Luchuans, which is illegal under international law, and to this day, Luchu remains under de facto joint occupation by both the U.S. and Japan, both of whom commit numerous human rights violations against Luchuans. Professor Hoshin Nakamura of Okinawa University survived the Battle of Okinawa but lost his younger brother. He has been an advocate for the restoration of Luchu's independence for over 50 years. He and other Luchuans at the time demanded a restoration of Luchu's independence but the U.S. ignored these demands. Professor Nakamura told me that during the Vietnam War, the U.S. military said that they are in Okinawa in order to protect Okinawans from the Viet Cong. However, the Viet Cong won the war and never invaded Okinawa. Now, the U.S. military is saying the exact same thing about China. However, due to the long history of peace and friendship between China and Luchu, the overwhelming majority of Luchuans do not see China as a threat. Even the U.S. government has privately admitted this via WikiLeaks. Luchu shares an ocean border with China and is actually much closer geographically to many major Chinese cities than it is to Tokyo. So the fact that the overwhelming majority of Luchuans do not see China as a threat is significant. The truth is around 80 to 90 percent of Luchuans or Uchinanshu oppose the U.S. military presence of our islands. Although Uchina or Okinawa makes up less than one percent of Japan's land area, it contains over 70 percent of the military presence, including 30,000 U.S. soldiers, along with their families as well as American civilian workers, making for a total of around 80,000 Americans. These Americans often commit crime in Uchina, including violent crime against women and children. Also, U.S. military aircraft often have accidents in Uchina, endangering the lives of both Uchinanchu civilians as well as the soldiers themselves. The military also causes numerous environmental problems, including the poisoning of Uchina's drinking water with cancer-causing agents. The military takes up over 15% of Uchina's land and around 30% of the arable land, yet contributes only around 5% to the economy, running at a huge economic burden on the Uchinanju people. Now the U.S. and Japan are destroying this ancient coral reef filled with hundreds of rare and endangered species, including the Okinawa dugong, in order to build a massive new base at a place called Hinoko, located on the northern part of the island. Miss Fumiko Shimabuku survived the Battle of Okinawa and has dedicated her life to helping ensure that the horrors of the war are never again repeated and that future generations of Uchinanshu can live in peace. At 92 years young, she has literally taken a stand against the military base construction. She and many other Uchinanshu regularly do sit-in demonstrations against the military, however, they are forcefully removed by Japanese riot police. Japanese government officials, such as current Prime Minister Yoshihide Suga, frequently try to rewrite Luchu's history in an attempt to claim that Luchu has always been part of Japan, even though the facts clearly state otherwise. 
This is similar to how they try to rewrite history in other ways, such as with the comfort women issue and with Japan's other war crimes. The United States, on the other hand, is aware of the history. They simply do not care in very much the same way that the United States treats indigenous peoples in general, as well as to pretty much any nation that they want something from. China, though, does support Lu Chu in rights, including the right to self determination. They also recognize Lu Chu's history as an independent country, as well as the crimes committed by the US and Japan towards Lu Chu. Professor Nakamura and other Lu Chuans, such as the Lu Chu Independence Action Network and the Peace for Okinawa Coalition, have been working together with other peoples and nations around the world. Such as the Hawaiian Kingdom, the Chamorro of the Mariana Islands, Native Americans, and others, in our shared struggle against US imperialism and in our pursuit of self determination. More and more people around the world are realizing that the US has an abysmal track record when it comes to human rights and treatment of minorities, and especially the treatment of indigenous peoples. A recent article in The Guardian says that the US is seen as the bigger threat to democracy than Russia or China, according to a global poll. Dr. Alfred Desaius is a leading expert in the field of human rights and international law. He is professor at the Geneva School of Diplomacy and International Relations, as well as a high ranking United Nations official. He has served in a variety of roles over the course of his long career at the UN, most recently as the original UN independent expert for a democratic and equitable international order. He has repeatedly voiced strong support for the right to self determination. For Lu Chuans, as well as Hawaiians, Native Americans, and many other oppressed peoples around the world. He told me that Lu Chuans are no more Japanese than we are American, and he encouraged me to use the native Lu Chuan terms and names, even though today the Japanese and English translations are more commonly used. In order to showcase our native language and demonstrate to the world that it is a unique language and that we are not Japanese. In a recent interview with Southern Metropolis Daily, he said Trump gave America a rather bad name, and Biden cannot redeem the United States and its reputation in the world unless he fundamentally changes policies, whereas in domestic affairs, Biden will be more progressive. In foreign affairs, the US will continue its hegemonic imperialistic policies that will not endear the US to Latin America, Asia, or African states. After all, the US did not perform very well during the Universal Periodic Review at the Human Rights Council, and there is always more justification to criticize the US during and after the UPR than just ad hoc out of the blue. Of course, Uncle Sam has a good memory and he regularly distributes awards to friends and punishes with sanctions those countries who dare criticize the US. I'm just about out of time for today, so I'll wrap it up here. International law already recognizes Lu Chu's legal independence, so by restoring Lu Chu's de facto independence, it will allow Lu Chu to once again become a center of international peace, prosperity, and multilateralism in the Asia Pacific region. This concludes my presentation for today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.